Uh, today, uh, I'm ministering to you, and we're on a series this month, Keys to Love Like God. And I don't know about you, but I want to love like God. Amen? And, uh, you know, I, the, the, the main reason for us to walk in God's love, one of the reasons why we should walk in God's love is for positive influence. Amen. Amen. Po- somebody say positive influence. I said positive influence because I, I, I didn't want to say negative influence. We want to have positive influence. Amen. And, you know, Jesus, when he, when he uh, uh, called his disciples, you know, some of his disciples were fishermen. And then he said to them, I will make you fishers of men. Amen. In other words, what Jesus was saying was, He's saying, you're not just going to influence the the fish in the sea. You're going to be influencing people for me. Oh, man, that could you could tweet that. (laughs) Amen. You're not going to be just influencing the fish in the sea, but you're going to be influencing people for me. And so what is God doing? God is is calling us to influence people. Amen. And and, and I'm telling you, if you're going to walk in love, you're going to be a positive person. You're going to be an upbeat person. Any positive people in the house? Any upbeat people in the house? Amen? You can't, you can't be negative and draw people to you. You've got to be a positive person. Somebody say, I'm a positive person. The Bible says that actually, you know, some people think that God is this mean, crusty God that's looking to, to smack us down when we mess up. That's not God. The Bible actually says that God... When, when people are doing evil things in this world, you know what the Bible says that God's doing? He's laughing. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 2 that he laughs his enemies to derision. He's laughing because their plans will not go through. Amen. In other words, people can plan things against God, but, but, but if you're trying to come against God, you already lost. Amen. 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 Amen, because you're not going to be able to beat God. Amen. God has already won. He's the creator. We're the created. He's the potter. We're the clay. Amen. So we're just going to have, look at your neighbor and say, get get with the program. So you're just going to have to get with the program with God. Amen. And, uh, but God is so awesome. So, so in, somebody say, say influence. So we want to be people of influence for good. Not people for influence for bad. You know, I think about my dad, uh, and I think about how he raised me and my my family, my 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 brothers and my sister, and he raised us up going to church. And you know, this was something. He was a military man. He would say, "As long as you're in my house, doesn't matter if I was 18, 19, as long as I was eating his food and living at his house." It was his way or the highway. I, it was his rules. And I, could, and I was okay with going to church one hour a day because he was taking care of me. I mean, that's, that's a small price to pay, right? And so, and so I was okay because he says, as long as you're in my house, you're going to church. And you know what? Uh, it's stuck. The Bible says, if you raise up a child in his way he should go, when he gets old, he will not depart. And I'm going to have to say this, that my dad raised up a legacy because why? Because he was a man of honor and integrity and he lived out his faith every day in front of us. And he was always going to church. My dad was a tither. He, he, he would tithe and, uh, and he was always financially blessed. And I thought to myself, if if he's always financially blessed and he was a tither, I'm going to take the cue and do the same thing. He went to church, he tithed, he served in the church, and praise God. I said, I'm going to do the same thing, and God has blessed my life as well. So I'm going to say this, that that people are watching you. People are paying attention, and your kids are paying attention. So we want to live our faith out living an upright, respectable life so our kids, so we can bring them up in the, the Bible says, in the admonition of the Lord. We want to set the highest level of, 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 uh, of 
of uh, wisdom and knowledge for them. We want to set the highest bar of integrity for them. Amen? And so God is so good. So all my brothers, uh, I have three brothers and one sister, and they're all serving God. Glory to God. They're all in church serving God because my dad lived it out for them. So what am I talking to you today? I'm talking to you about influence. And, and, and really, walking in the love of God will influence people. You know, I think about this, that when Jesus called his disciples and he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, he actually sent his disciples out two by two to pray for people, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to deliver people and set them free. And you know what? God, has, Jesus has given his disciples power to influence people. So you have power. Say, I have power to influence people. Amen. For God's good. Amen. And so you have the power. So what's that power to do? To heal people, to deliver people, to show the love of God to people. Amen. And so God is good. You know, God's goodness is revealed in his character. Can I say that again? God's goodness is revealed in his character. What is his character? Well, God is truthful. God cannot lie. He's honest. Amen? And if he's going to be truthful and honest, we have to be truthful and honest people ourselves. I love this about his character. In Psalms 145, 8 and 9, it said, The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and all his tender mercies or over all his works. I love that. It, it talks about mercy. I read one psalm where basically the whole psalm was talking about how merciful God is. God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. Amen? And so if it, that's his character, then we're supposed to take on the same character, I'm preaching to somebody today, as our Heavenly Father. So what does that mean? Well, if God is slow to anger and great in mercy... What kind of people should we be? We be, should be people slow in anger. Amen. Great in mercy. Glory to God. We should be people that, 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 has, that looks, you know, that, that thinks the best of people. Glory to God. Amen. And so we, we, we need, and then it says that, that God's goodness is over all his works. We need to be, we need to be do, a good doer people. Amen. We need to be doing good acts, walking in love towards others. Amen? And I love that. So God's goodness overlooks our mistakes. Amen. I'm going to say it again. God's goodness overlooks our mistakes. Because I'm going to say this to you that, that I'm not perfect. I know you might think that I am. And uh, you say, that pastor, he's, he's awesome. He's perfect. But no, no. I, you know, ask my wife. I have flaws. See, your spouse knows your flaws. <laughs> Amen. As my wife, she will tell you probably something. She won't tell you any of my flaws because she thinks I'm perfect as a driven snow. But no, I'm kidding. But we all have flaws. We all have weaknesses. And I love this about God is that God overlooks our weaknesses. He overlooks some of our shortcomings. God's not so focused on our performance. He's focused on our hearts. See, if our heart's endeavoring to do good, but we can do bad at times, God looks at our hearts, but not our performance all the time. Can I get a witness in the house today? He's looking at, do you have a desire to serve God, but you still mess up? Do you have a desire to walk with Him? Do you still make mistakes? Yes, but God's looking at our heart and not just our performance. And I love this in Psalms 103. In verse 10 and 12, it says, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy towards those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. I love that. So why, why would God try to overlook some of our, our, our faults? And why would God 
not, he doesn't want to remember our misgivings. Why? Because God's more interested, you ready for this, in relationship than he is in legalism and law. God desires relationship over religion. See, the Pharisees desired religion over relationship. They had the rules, they had the word of God, but they didn't know God. And we need to know God. Somebody say, I need to know God. And so God is slow to anger, abounding in mercy. His loving kindness is over all his works. His loving kindness is over all of us. And he's always trying to do good in our lives. And we need to be emulating that character. In Romans 5, 8 and 10, I love this. It says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Do you know that you're saved today? Do you know what you're saved from? Well, it's more than just being saved from the devil. You're saved from the wrath of God to come. Do you know the wrath is coming? Do you know that there's, uh, there's uh, going to be a judgment day? There's, the wrath is coming. But the grace is coming first. Jesus is going to split the eastern sky. He's picking us up. Amen. But then there's going to be the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of God. There's going to be seven years of turmoil in this world. I'm not going to be here for that. I'm going to be taken up, some preachers say, I'm going to be taken up on the first load. That means you're going to die first because the dead in Christ is raised first. Amen. No, I'm going to be taken up on the second load because the dead in Christ is going to be raised and then I'm going to be raised. And I believe it's going to be my lifetime. I'm not going to experience death. Amen. Jesus is coming back. Somebody say Jesus is coming back. Amen. And I love this. It says this. It says here, uh, since we have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if why we were God's enemies, notice that, why we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Somebody say, I'm reconciled. Amen. So, so, so I'm going to say this. All you that have received Jesus, you don't have wrath of God abiding over you. You have the grace of God abiding over you. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. Amen. It's not, it's not, it's not that if you're on God, uh, it's not that, that, that we are on God's side, it's God on our side. Amen. Amen. And God is on my side. Amen. If we're going to love like God, amen, amen, we're going to love like God, we must overlook people's mistakes and shortcomings. God overlooks ours. In 1 Corinthians 13, 5, it says, God's love in us does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And this is the crown jewel of this scripture. It keeps no record of wrongs. Amen. God's love keeps no records of wrongs. Amen. In other words, we don't tally up everything that somebody does against us and we keep a record of it. No, no. That record, once we forgive, we burn the record. Amen. We let it go. We, 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 we don't hold on to wrong things that people do to us. Amen. If we're going to love like God, we're going to have to be committed to walking in love towards God and towards people. Amen. Somebody say, be committed. be committed. You know, I think about this. Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love your Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, and he said those two right there fulfills the entire law of the prophets. Amen. Think about every law that was written in the Bible. I think it's over 600 laws. Amen was written, but, but just loving God and loving people fulfills the entire law. Amen. That's amazing to me. That means that we can walk in the fullness of God's blessing in our life when we're loving God and loving people. 
If you're not loving people, are you truly loving God? Just want you to think about it. Sila. Think about that. If you're not loving people, are you truly loving God? Because your love towards people is, is, is closely related to your love towards God. Amen. I love that. And I love what it says in Deuteronomy. And now Moses is speaking here. And Moses is speaking to Joshua under the anointing. And, and he says, the Lord himself, this is Deuteronomy 31.8, the Lord himself goes before you to Joshua and will be with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So, so this is here. He's saying this, but in the book of Hebrews, uh, I believe the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, and, 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 and he took the same scripture pertaining to us, that God goes before us, that God will never leave us, that God will never forsake us, even when we have problems. I like what it says in Philippians being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ. What that's telling me is that God's not going to give up on me. Amen. That what that tells me is that God's going to work with me through my problems. And hopefully he's going to work my problems out of me. Amen. Amen. Am I preaching to somebody today? God is the... The potter, we're the clay. So God's working some things out of us. Darkness is leaving us. Light is coming. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? And there's always degrees. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are in Christ, how sanctified you are. There are still some areas in our life where we need a fix. And if you don't think you need to fix anything, I can tell you what your problem is. It's called pride. <laughs> it means you think you're all perfect. <laughs> Have you ever heard somebody say, that person's high and mighty? Have you ever, that person's high and, we don't want to be high and mighty. God's the only high and mighty one. Amen. But what does that mean? That means that when you when, when somebody calls you high mighty, it means that you you look you 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 look down on people. You think you're better than other. Where I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not better than you, and you're not better than me. Amen. We're all one in Christ. You all are spectacular people, and I'm a spectacular person too. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. And so, and so we got to be understand this, that, that, that the Paul said that, that he was confident that the work that God began in us, he will complete it till the day of Christ. God's going to complete what he started in you. That tells me he's not going to leave us alone. That tells me that, that he's going to keep working on us until we become just like Jesus, we look like Jesus. We're not going to become Jesus, but we'll, we, we, the Bible says when, when we see him, we'll be just like him. Doesn't the Bible say that? When we see him, we'll be just like him. To love like God, we have to have a committed love, a love that, that never gives up, that never loses faith, that's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That's out of the love chapter. Love never gives up, never loses faith. Love is always hopeful, and love endures through every circumstance. Amen? In other words, when you're walking in love, and you're walking in the love of God, you don't quit. Has anybody ever felt like quitting? I, I have to admit, I feel like quitting at times. I've, I've been in that quit zone. Have, has anybody felt like quitting? Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe you're going through a rough time in your marriage and every once in a while you just feel like throwing in the towel. Has anybody been there? Yeah. Maybe you, 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 you have a friendship and that friendship is strained and you're about ready to quit on that. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe your boss is not treating you right and you're about ready to say, tell him to take that job and shove it because <laughs> I'm not working here no more. 
Amen. Maybe that boss that's been getting on your nerves. Have you, have you ever heard that song? Take that job and shove it. Ain't working here no more. That's, that's Southern. I'm preaching a little Southern today. Is that all right? Take it. Amen. Take the job and shove it. Amen. And so, and so what am I saying today? There's going to be times where we're going to have pressure in our lives that's going to make us want to quit. What does the devil want to do? He wants us to quit. But when you're walking in the love of God, the love of God won't let you quit. I would say this, the love of God won't let me quit. Amen. I've, I've thought about it every once in a while, very few times. But every once in a while, as a pastor, I have trying days. I'm like, God, are you sure about this? You sure you called me to this? I, 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 I'm kind of questioning my call at times. I, can I be honest? I'm like, Lord, are you sure about this? Do I really have the temperament, you know, for pastoring? My, if you ask my wife, she'll say you don't. <laughs> you definitely don't have the temperament for pastoring. Pastors are loving and kind. You seem to be hard and abrupt at times. I don't know. That's my personality. I have a prophetic personality. Maybe God's called me to be a prophet, to point people's problems out. Amen. <laughs> The prophet points out people's problems. Amen. And no, he's calling me to be a pastor, to walk in love and, 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 and to feel people's pain, glory to God. And so, and that's what God, and, and he's working, he's working that in me. Amen. And so I love that. So, so in Galatians, it says here, if the love of God compels us to not quit, it says, don't, the love of God, uh, let's look at Galatians, it says, so let not Let's not get tired of doing what is good. This is New Living Translation. At just the right time, we'll reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have an opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially in the household of faith. God wants us being nice, not just to the world, to influence the world for Jesus, but He wants us being nice uh, with each other. I'm going to say again, God wants us being nice with each other, glory to God. Not just the people out there. And you, and I'm going to say this, you need to be nice to your family. Sometimes we, we're, we're nicer to, to strangers than we are to our family because we know our family. So we, we can talk down to our family because they're stuck with us. But sometimes we're nicer to strangers than we are to our own family. Can I preach today? Can I get real to you with you today? Amen. Sometimes we can get more nasty with our family than with our own with our own flesh and blood than with, with strangers out here. Glory to God. No, no. Walk in love towards your family. Walk in love towards your church family. Always be trying to do good and be a blessing. And we have people in the church that's always blessing one another. I see that all the time. And, and, and it blesses me to see people bless people in the church. It's awesome. And I love this. It's in, in John 13, 35. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, by this... Uh, all will know that you are my disciples. You know what is the acid test of knowing that we're disciples of Jesus? The acid test is if we have love for one another. That's the test if we're true disciples. Not just being obedient to following the letter of the law, but are we walking in love towards one another? Amen. I love that. God speaks like that. We got to be careful because love controls words. Somebody say love controls words. And so really we got to be very careful because loose lips sink ships. Your words can cause problems. Words can cause wars. And we got to be very careful with what we say out of our mouths. The Bible says, let your words be grace. Let grace be, come out of your mouth. Uh, with, with, with just grace words, amen? And I love this. It says here, um, uh, uh, this is how God speaks. You ready to hear how God speaks? I found this in Proverbs 8, 6 through 8. He says here, listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. That's how God speaks. 
See, he, he, he says here, I have trustworthy things to say. My lips speak what is right. God is always speaking what is right. Amen? He speaks what is true. Amen? And he detests wickedness. He doesn't, God doesn't speak any wickedness out of his mouth. And that's the same thing we need to do. We don't speak any wickedness out of our mouth. And he says that his words are just and there's nothing crooked or perverse in his words. And there should not be anything crooked or perverse in our words. Amen. 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 I like what it says here in James 1.26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep and tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Wow. So your religion... What you believe is activated by what you say. Can I say that again? Your religion is, is connected to what you say. In other words, what we believe is what we, uh, what we think. What we believe is what we say. And we need to be saying God's words and not our words. Amen? We need to be agreeing with what God says about us. Amen. And disagreeing with what the devil says about us. Amen. You might be dealing with a problem, but that problem is temporary. And you don't need to focus on the problem. Focus on the problem, promise. Amen. And you focus on a problem. The, the problem, the devil might say you're a loser, but my Bible says I'm a conqueror. Right. So I'm going to speak I'm a conqueror, regardless if it looks like I'm a loser or what people might be saying about me. I'm going to believe what God says about me instead of what people say about me. Amen. The doctor's report may say I have something in my body, but, but, but the Bible tells me by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Amen. So I'm going to have to side with God's word and not just the doctor's report. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, from whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary. So, so, so here James is saying, if you're going to be a religious person, you better learn to control what, what comes out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. I love that. Uh, in Psalms 109, 17, it says, As he loved cursing, so let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessing, so be it far from him. This is interesting. we got to be very careful that we're not cursing out of our mouths. And what do I mean by that is, uh, more than just saying curse words, cursing what you have. Uh, maybe you have a car that, that doesn't start all the time. And you start saying, this blankety-blank car that never starts. You don't want to curse your car. You don't want to curse. Or, or maybe you have a spouse that messes up. You don't want to curse your spouse. You don't want to curse your kids. No, no. You know, the, the key in the, you know, in the Old Testament, did you know that in the patriarchs, glory to God, that they always volleyed for their father's blessing. Have you ever heard that? They always wanted the blessing. You know, at the end of their father's life, you know, there's always a fight over the blessing. Remember Jacob and Esau? And, and Jacob pretended to be Esau. And why did he do that? Because he wanted the father's blessing. He wanted the blessing on his life. Amen. And so if God, I'm going to say this, God's not a curser, he's a blesser. And he's looking to bless us. His word doesn't, when we read his word, you shouldn't be focused on the, on the, on the curses in the Bible. You should be focused on the promises and the blessings in the Bible. Be positive. And I love this in Psalms 109, it says, So cursing, if you delight in cursing, it will come upon you. But if you delight in blessing... Uh, if you don't delight in blessing, it will be far from you. To love like God loves, we need to walk in the unity of God with people. Amen. Amen. If you're going to walk in the love of God, you've got to walk in unity with God, and you've got to walk in unity with people. I'm going to say this, unity is the key. If you think about the Godhead. Think about the Godhead for a second. The Godhead, when you think about the Godhead, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you hear three in one. The Godhead. Do you think they're ever in disagreement? Do you think that the Godhead ever fights with each other? 
Do you think that the Godhead is, ever argues with one another? You know, the Father is arguing with the Son, the Son's arguing with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't happen. Why? That's why it's called Trinity. What's Trinity? Tri-unity. Tri-unity. So they're in, they're in one. They're unified, right? And so, and so what, what is the devil trying to do? He's, he's trying to divide us. Amen. United we stand, divided we fall. And the devil knows this, so the devil's always trying to get us divided. But we can't allow him to do that. We can't allow the devil to win in our lives. I love what it says in Psalms 133, 1 and 3. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For thou, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, and I love this, life forevermore. If you, I know I read this pretty fast, but he talks about the blessing of unity, and he says it's, it's likened to this oil that runs over Aaron's head. You know, they would anoint the priest with oil, and that oil was running, they would put a lot of oil on you and they would run down. That oil signifies the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I want the oil of the Holy Spirit to be in my life. And if I'm out of unity with, with, with God or with the body, the oil of the Holy Spirit will not be present in my life like it needs to be. And I don't know about you, but how many people need more grace in your life? i got to have the oil of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God on my life. So I'm going to walk in love towards God. I'm going to walk in love towards people if it hair lips the devil. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to walk in love. I'm not going to let what people do to me determine how I respond to them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thanks, Amen. I'm not saying that's easy. I'm not saying that, oh, this, oh, that's a cakewalk, Pastor. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they treated me. No, I don't, but I've been treated bad before. Sometimes it takes me a few days <laughs> to get over it. Sometimes it takes me a while. I'm, I can't say that I'm Teflon, that it just comes right off me like water off a duck's back. Sometimes it's not difficult. It's difficult at times to let things go. But I'm going to say it's worth it. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Wasn't there a song about let it go? Okay, well, that's a Disney song. Amen. But we just got to let it go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't want to pump up Disney because I don't care for their politics. But we'll continue. Uh, love. It doesn't talk bad about people. Amen. Love. Amen. So, so what does the devil want to do? He wants to divide. When, when Jesus was healing people, listen. Listen, I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get this finished up. But when Jesus was healing people, the Pharisees were jealous of Jesus. And they said, you know, Jesus, he's healing people, but he's not doing it by God's power. You know, they, 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 one time they said they know that, you know, remember uh, uh, that one Pharisee that came to Jesus at night, Nicodemus, and said, we know that you are of God because you can't do the miracles that you do unless God's with you. Some of the Pharisees believed that God was with But other Pharisees believed it wasn't God. They believed it was the devil. They believed that, the, that, that Jesus was acting under the power of the devil. And so, and so Jesus said, listen, you guys, you don't, you don't get it. You don't understand spiritual warfare. Let me, let me break it down to you what spiritual warfare is all about. And he says here in Mark 3, 24, he says this, If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. So Jesus was saying to them was, listen, if I'm casting out devils and healing people, I'm coming against the kingdom of darkness. If I'm coming against the kingdom of darkness and, and you're saying I'm for the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness cannot stand. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So what am, what am I saying to you today? This is a principle that the devil knows. If he knows he can get us divided, he can conquer us. And we're not going to get divided, glory to God. Amen. I like what it says in Ephesians. It says that, that in 4.13, Till we come to the unity of the faith 
of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So focus on loving God is focusing on being an influence of good to people around us. It's, a, it's being a person of influence. When, when Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers and then he ended up getting sold into slavery, Joseph, he, he forgave his brothers. Joseph did not hold that against his brothers. And Joseph said what the devil basically meant for harm, God turned for good. He said what the devil intended for harm, God intended for good. And this is in Genesis 50. And so, and so whatever the enemy's trying to do for harm in our life, God can turn for good. Do you believe that today? Whenever we are hurt, a lot of times we want to protect ourselves. And we've got to be very careful about that. We build walls. And when you build walls, those walls, uh, they keep people from coming in, but it keeps you from going out. Amen. I'm going to say that again. When you build walls because you've been hurt, it keeps, you may keep people from coming in, but it keeps you from going out. What do I mean by that? It keeps you from, 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 uh, uh, from developing godly relationships. I know one person that, that, got, that, that was uh, engaged and the lady uh, uh, broke the engagement off. He was really in love with this lady. And, and he was hurt so bad from that engagement, he never got married again. Never tried to develop another relationship with another person again. I'm going to say this. I don't believe in the idea there's only one for you. That's right. I believe there's many fish in the sea. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe that God can work out. If, if for some reason your spouse says bye and get out, hey, you know what? God has somebody else that's going to come in and take their place. Can somebody say amen on that? Amen. Many fish in the sea. There's not just one. In other words, God has the replacement. Amen? amen. amen? God always has the replacement. He has. So, so don't get so caught up in, oh, they were the one. <laughs> they were the one. You know, yeah, you know, there's many ones out there, amen? In Proverbs 18, 1, that's where we get caught up. They're the one, you know. A man who isolates himself, this is, this is where I got to get scripture so back what I said. A man, talk about walls. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all judgment. So what happens is when we get hurt, we don't want anybody to be around us. We, we go hide, we run into our room and hide, get in our bed and get the blanket over our heads. And we don't want anybody to talk to us. And we got to be very careful that we don't take on that attitude. Amen? Uh, and we gotta, we, gotta be, we got to learn to love and forgive. And you need to learn to love like you've never been hurt before. You need to learn to love like you've never been hurt before. Somebody wrote a book on that. Jensen Franklin. <laughs> he wrote a book. Love like you've never been hurt before. I stole that from Jensen. Thank you, Jensen. But anyway, uh, and, 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 and you got to do that. Amen. If you're going to love like Jesus loves, if you're going to love like God's love, you can't have an attitude that you're going to benefit from every relationship. In other words, I wonder what I'm going to get out of this deal. Some people come to church, and they come to church, and I understand this. I, I, when I first came to church, it was like, it was all about me. It's like, what is the pastor going to give me today? What kind, of, what kind of hugs am I going to get today? What kind of blessing am I going to get today? It was all about me. But, you know, but, and it was like a one-sided relationship. Finally, as I started coming to church, God said, what about me? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean, God? Well, do you want to, why don't you serve? Why don't you help? Why don't you give? Why don't you be a blessing? Are you here? It has to, it has to go from what about me to what about others? Amen. Amen. It, 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 we can't live self-centered lives. Amen. Selfish lives. The me, myself, I life. We got to be very careful about that. And, and I love this because, because we start off saying what about me, but we should end up 
saying, what about you? What about God? I love this because it says in Philippians 2 and 4, it said, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen. So we're not supposed to be looking out just for our own interests. We're supposed to be looking out for the interests of others. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why we, we, uh, every, every, every service we have, we give you the opportunity to give. And when you give and you sow into the kingdom of God, you're helping people. You're helping God. Uh, God. You're helping the, the gospel get out there, glory to God. You're doing something. Your dollars are making disciples uh, for, the, for the kingdom of God. Amen? Your dollars is, is bringing people into the kingdom of God. We're using our money for the kingdom of God. Of God, Amen. Uh, uh, if you sometimes when you get hurt, you, you say, "I must control the relationship." I want to say this: you can't control people. Yeah, and when you try to start controlling people, telling them what to do, it doesn't it doesn't go over too big. I I I can't control my wife. I I can't control you guys. I can't control any. I, I don't have. I can't even control a fly. Amen. I'm not going to try to. I can't make you come to church. I'm going to say this. God can't make you come to church. God won't even control you. You have to use your own free will to serve God. That's the reason why he loves you so much. You know why he loves you so much? You're using your own free will to come to church on a Sunday morning when you could be sitting home watching Good Morning America. And having an easy Sunday. Easy like Sunday morning, you know. So, so, so we got, we, we, you're serving God because you love Him. He's not making you do that. You can't control, control people, amen? In other words, uh, it says here, let nothing be done, Philippians 2, 3, through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each of you esteem others better than himself. Glory to God. I'm going to say this, and I'm trying to close this down. Uh, we're gonna, we're, you can't get out of relationships uh, as you are a human being, amen? And we're going to all, they say there's two things you can't escape, death and taxes. But, uh, but bottom line is that, you, that we're going to be in relationship with God, and we're going to be in relationship with people, and when we get to heaven, guess what we're going to have? Relationship with God and relationship with people. Amen. You're not going to be able to get out of it. And God's called us to have a relationship with one another. I'm going to say this. People will disappoint us at times. People will disappoint us. Peter disappointed Jesus at times. Amen? Remember Peter walked on the water? And, Jesus, and, and then Peter started sinking. And Jesus said, where was your faith? Why did you doubt? I think Jesus was a little disappointed that Peter didn't walk back with a boat, Jesus had to pull them out of that water. Glory to God. People will make mistakes at times. Amen. People will make mistakes. They will miss the mark. And we've got to understand that, 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 that he, again, Peter made mistakes trying to tell Jesus he wasn't going to the cross. He said, Jesus, you're not going to go to the cross. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. People make mistakes, but they might have good intentions. Peter had a good intention, but, but, he, but, but the way he was carrying out was wrong. People are selfish at times. Have you ever been selfish? <laughs> want to do your own thing? Don't want to do other things? Uh, you know, the disciples, they fell asleep on Jesus at his greatest moment. They fell asleep at Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was about ready to be taken in. People will disappoint you. People will abandon you and betray you at times. What? I'm going to say this. If you don't want to get offended, don't expect too much from people. If you expect too much from people, you're going to get disappointed. But if you don't expect too much from people, you'll never be disappointed. Is that right? In other words, don't expect too much from your spouse. Then you'll never be disappointed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't expect too much from your children. Or you'll never be disappointed. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? People will abandon you. They will leave you. They all left Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They left him. Peter denied Jesus three times. But Peter came back. And, and, and Jesus came back to Peter. And, and, and Jesus had Peter profess his love three times to him. 
I'm going to say this to you today that as long as we're staying close to God, that we're abiding in the vine, that His love, His character will be seen through our lives. So I'm going to, I'm going to just end it right with this right now. If you're going to love like God, you just need to stay in God. Stay in His Word. Stay in prayer. Stay in church. And when you do these things, you will manifest the character and the love of God. And when you're manifesting the character and the love of God, you will be an inspiration to people all around you and you will bring them closer to God because that's what we're called to do. Fishers of men. Did you receive it today? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you for your mercies and your goodness and your love. I thank you, Father God, that you are calling us to be people of love, people of influence. And Father, I'm asking, Father God, that you help us to walk in love towards people that are unlovely. Help us to walk in love, Father God, to you, towards you, Lord. And I'm asking, Father God, that your grace will continue to bless this church as we walk in love. Perhaps you're here in the audience or watching, listening, and you have not made a decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Right now, God may be knocking on the door of your heart. And I want to uh, uh, ask you to open that door for Jesus to come in. So to do this, you just need to pray a simple prayer. And just if you're ready for Jesus to come in to be the king of your heart, just say this prayer and mean in your heart. Say, Dear God, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, listening or watching, we believe you got born again. Connect with us. SeaLifeChurch.org will help you get your walk moving down forward with the Lord. Amen.